um, tell me, um, how long did you work for that Walgreens for? Uh, about four months. Okay, so you were there for four months. Were you in the pharmacy or as a pharmacy tech? Or? Yes, I was in the pharmacy as a pharmacy tech. I did my externship there, and then I worked there, and then I got hurt. Okay, and you got hurt there, huh? Or you got hurt no, someplace else, right? No, I got else, hurt right? somewhere else. Nice okay, all right, very good. Um, look, um, you were just telling us um, that you noticed some stuff going on. Can you just, um, you know, uh, uh, reiterate what you say that you were that you saw or what was yeah, going on? Yeah, I was like, I was the only black there. Okay. And they would have people come ask me for medication, and I knew they weren't supposed to get it. And they would tell me that the lady down there gave it to them. I said, well, go ask the lady down there for it. And then she would say, no, you can give me to I said, I can't give you anything from back here. And then I would notice that I wouldn't be allowed to fill script bottles or if prescriptions came in. I was able to read them, but I wasn't able to, they wouldn't allow me to really fill them. They would let someone else handle the medication. I would just be standing there or either they would have me get the bottles instead of doing what my job requires is consist of. Right. And I was, and I used to, I just used to have a problem. So I quit. I just left the store because I knew this is a setup. Right. You know, they were prejudiced. I was the only, in the whole store. I was the only, I mean, not just in the pharmacy, the whole store. Right. I was the only black employee. Right. So I right. felt uncomfortable. Right. So I left. And who tried to get you to give them medication there? The, the ladies from the, the that the, worked there the, too, the right? There. The ones that worked there in the front, in the, in the, you know, they work in the, the they cashier. don't work in the pharmacy. They work in the cashier area and, the uh the, the the stocking and stuff like, like that. The, uh, okay. They come back there and say, oh, "Give me an aspirin. I can't give you anything from back here." Well, she used to. We'll go tell her to give it to you now. Right, right, right. And then I went in the Wild Green with my wife's prescription, mm -hmm. and they told me they couldn't fill it because he's under investigation, and uh, the DA got him under investigation. You need to stop taking your wife there before she go to jail. And they just went off. And then I went to. Okay, now let, let's just go back real quick, Belton. And I know this is, you know, you have a lot because you've probably been through a lot too. Yeah, obviously, have, like, yeah. yeah. Um, but you, your wife is a patient here. We've been treating her for about a couple of years, right? Yeah. And she does it. have problems. She have X-rays and MRI on her chart. Oh, she has, she, yeah, she has water in her neck and in her yeah, back. Yeah, she, and has, she has serious problems yeah, here. Yeah, she does. And she doesn't take one of those C two. She takes a very small amount of pain medication, right? Yeah. She's That's responsible. It. You think she's responsible? Oh, yes, my wife is responsible. Okay, very good. Felton, you actually said that you took your wife prescription to the Walgreens where you worked at. And they wouldn't and fill it. And they wouldn't fill and it. And they huh? told me all that stuff about under investigation, DEA, stop my wife from going. And then I went across the street to Rite Aid. Same thing. Have you ever seen, because, um, you know, I, ha I know a pharmacist down the street. And she used to work at Rite Aid. And she said Walgreens called him all the time. What do you know about that? Walgreens calling other pharmacists, telling them not to fill scripts. Well, when I worked there, they, they used to call other pharmacists. They used to get a script from the person, take the number, and give them back the script. Because they, we, they used to fill out the script and everything. And then once they filled it out, they had the information. Mm -hmm. And once they got the information, they would call and talk to other pharmacists about whether who was who and, you know. What should they fill it or not, huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I know there's a lot of patients that come here that actually has mentioned that. Yeah, because they right used to there. have us. The lady used to tell them, call and see if they're allowed to fill this script from this particular doctor. And I'm like, I didn't learn this in school. Right, call to fill the script from a particular doctor. Call to see if they, if it's authorized to fill the script from a particular doctor. Right, and then they would, and like with, with, with my wife's script, they said no. First, they would take the script, and then they'd call me back up and say. We're not authorized to fill this script. And I said, what's going on? Well, he's an investigation. Right, A. Mm -hmm. Wild Green. That's mm -hmm. what they told me. So I take her scripts to Walmart, and I have no problem filling them. Uh, yeah. I, I heard that Walgreens on Alessandra anyway calls that Rite Aid. It's right across the street. Yeah, they write, they, I've oh, heard they that stay a couple together. of times. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they, 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 they... And together with everything. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Because they're the only two right there. Right, right. I didn't, I didn't have it where... I know what a Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 drug is. Right. We, we, schedule we, 2, Schedule 3, yeah, that we, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, we trained for that. Okay. And uh, my biggest thing was I was never allowed to touch any of it. To You know, the pharmacy has to give it to you to fill the script. But I never was allowed to even fill a script that was mm -hmm. Schedule 1, 2, or 3 drug. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was kind of uncomfortable because they wouldn't let me do my job, what I was trained to do. Okay, okay. You know? 
Have you ever seen them? We get a lot of hate mail from and then Walgreens. The, wait, and then the state start calling me. The state? And want to know what I'm doing with my license, who's using my license, what am I doing with my license, who's using my license. So I let my license expire. I didn't, I mean, I'm still not, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm not a felon or anything. I'm just disabled now. But they kept calling them, what are you doing with your license? Who's using your license number? And such and such and such. We have somebody use us. Nobody using my license. So I got tired of them bugging me so much. I just let it expire. Mm. And that was kind of uncomfortable for me and weird for them to be calling me. The state Asking time. me about my license. Right. Do you think Walgreens have something to do with yeah, that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I okay. do. Because they're the only ones that I ever worked at with right. my license. Right. So when I probably right. stopped working, they like, well, you know, they figure all blacks do. We, we crooked and do wrong stuff anyway. Right. But the state bugged me so much about my license. I just let it expire. And I just recently went back to Career College of America to get my license renewed. Okay. Have mm -hmm. you, let me ask you a quick question. Have you ever been at the front desk of a Walgreens when somebody come in for a prescription and they t you hear them say that there, the investigation or a red flag and all that stuff there? Have they, you heard them say that? They there? told me that. Oh, they told you that told personally, that. right? Yeah, about, but have you, about have my you, wife. Medicine. Have you been in the back and got a chance to tell somebody else that, though? Have you? Because know, you, you was working back yeah, in the well, pharmacy. Well, they used to tell me to tell them they couldn't fill the script. Okay, okay. They wouldn't right. say why. They just say, tell them we can't fill this here. Okay, but have you heard them tell somebody in the front that there? Like, you know, one of the pharmacists? Or you mm -hmm. never was right there with no, them? No, I never huh? was right there. I just would hear them say, uh, we can't fill this script. And I said, well, this, you know, we, we just can't fill this script. Give it back to them. Right. So right. I'm figuring it was the doctor. Right. You know, it had right. to be. You just can't say, I can't fill the script when they got Medi-Cal or they paying for it. Or, right. And I seen them turn down paying people that was going to pay for their prescription because they didn't have Medi-Cal or anything. Insurance. Yeah. And they wouldn't even accept it. They wouldn't accept that you know, either. So that's huh? like, yeah. wow. Wow. But as far as the faxes are concerned, we were getting faxes from them, like put Billy in early on a prescription request form. What kind of information do you have on that there as far as the um they send prescription request form. You know what that is, right? Yeah. yeah the I prescription know. request form. You have to, send, that, it, you have to that, send it back to the doctor. They have it sent back to the pharmacist. Who's, who sends that out? Is that already made? It's just automated or no? no? They have to write no, that out. No, the pharmacist has to. That has to be written. That has to be written, That right? has to be written. It's not an automated process. It's a... It's a typed process, yeah, right? Yeah, you have to type it up and then we have to, send, we have to submit it through the fax machine. And That's the, right. And the number you're calling has to be put into the machine for it to send it. Okay, I, that's what I wanted to know. So, like I was telling you, um, first we received an uh, anonymous call from a pharmacist in Walgreens who called and said that uh, the Billy N. early word here and hung up on us. And then we received faxes from um, Walgreens, Menifee, Moreno Valley, um, Riverside, Paris. Uh, they all put Billy N. early on it at different times. So, uh, how do you think that happened? They sent it. They had to. They, they it has to, to be it, written. Huh? It has to be written out, and then it has to be inputted into the fax machine. There's nothing just automatically in there. You have to write it out. Then you put it in there. Then you put the fax number that you, the sender. You right. put his fax number in the machine, and then you put and then you send it. You put it in. Right. And right. then that's how it'll get to where it's supposed to go. It's gone. But what about inside the computer screen where they actually um, talk about the doctors' their profile? Have you seen a lot of? Have you seen any bad things in their profiles about people? They won't allow me to do the profile. Oh, they they, won't allow, you wasn't allowed. I'm a pharmacy huh? tech, but other pharmacy techs were allowed to go and and look in their profiles. Yeah, but they wouldn't. I wasn't even really allowed to work the computer to pull up scripts. Right. So you were basically. And why the, do you think they and did I'm that one, to you? And I'm the one that's able to. And I was the one that was really able to read scripts. Right. Before they started making their doctors write them legible. Right. Well, I was trained how to read scripts in school, and I was one of the best script readers. I right. made four A's and one B. Right. All the way through school. Right. Right. In my 40s. I mean, what, was, why, why do you think Walgreens, I mean, did that to you in general? I mean. Discrimination, prejudice. I mean, they just, I guess, I wouldn't, being black, I'm not qualified to have that much knowledge to be able to conduct myself or be able to handle a professional job like that. But I am, and I were, and I was. You know what I'm saying? And you said something about me. You said there. Oh, they and, just don't. You too professional. See what what it is with you is. First, you're black. You're not supposed to be that intelligent. That's the. That's just. A, that's just factual for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like anywhere else, 
we're supposed to be druggies, dopies, custodian jobs, uh, labor jobs, never professional jobs where we dress clean and have the mental capacity to do the job. They don't think you're supposed to be in this profession. Mm -hmm. No, no, not making this kind, not earning the kind of money that your job is paid for. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have this type of job because that get, that for, that qualifies you and fortifies you to live a different lifestyle. And they don't figure you should live with that lifestyle when there's a lot of them that don't have the knowledge to be able to do the job you do to live that type of lifestyle. Wow. You know and they got yeah. a problem with it. Mr. Billy Early is a physician assistant and healthcare advocate. Billy is on the National Advisory Board for Black Doctors Matters, the American Pain Institute. And Billy is an advocate for the World Sickle Cell Federation. You can help fund our march to Washington, D.C. by making your donation to the American Pain Institute. The link can be found in the description box below. Thank you.